Hi there, my name is Yasmin. I am a tutor here at Tutor Impact. And today we are learning about spotting mistakes in writing. So this video goes hand in hand with my videos on how to write a story and how to write an essay. And it's really just to stress the importance of learning to proofread and learning to be able to spot your mistakes. Now, it's really important when you have written something that you um, don't skim over it and pay attention to the detail to ensure that you don't have any errors, be that grammatical or spelling. And it's really important to go away and come back and read it with a fresh mind. So the structure of this lesson today is we're going to go through a couple of common mistakes when it comes to um, writing. And then we are going to look at a couple of passages and I'm going to see if you can spot the mistakes in them. Now, you might already know a few of these common errors, but it's really important you get to grips with learning the differences between them, especially when they are similar words. So we're going to start with the words you are and your. So your and your um, as they are pronounced. So these look very similar, but they are in fact very different words. And although they're pronounced the same, when you're writing these words down, you need to ensure that you're using the correct version. So the first one, your, the one spelt U, U apostrophe R E, is actually a contraction of the phrase you are. So it doesn't mean the same as the other, spe uh, the other spelling. So it's a contraction of you are. So it's a quick way of saying you are. So it means exactly the same thing. It's just shortened down. So an example of that is you're going to love my cat. So you are going to love my cat, but that's shortened down to you're going to love my cat. Now, you just need to remember that the apostrophe signifies that um, a letter or more is missing. So here we are removing the letter A from the phrase you are, and we're just joining them together by using that apostrophe. So your just means you are, it's just a contraction of the word. Whereas the other version of your, which is pronounced exactly the same, is actually a possessive adjective, which is used to show ownership. So this one is not a contraction because it's in fact a possessive adjective, um, as I said, which is used to show ownership. And it is typically followed by a noun. So we can see that here in the example. I like your cat. Here we have the possessive your and cat, which is the noun that follows it. So your cat, you can see how your, the possessive adjective, describes the cat because this is the cat of you. So it is your cat. So that's the difference between those two. One is a contraction of you are, and the other one is possessive. The next common words we're going to look at are there, there, and there. So again, they are all pronounced exactly the same. So when it comes to spoken English, you don't need to worry about this. But as we said before, when we're writing it, we need to make sure we're using the correct one. So the first one is there, spelt T-H-E-R-E. And as it says here, it's usually about location. And the way I used to remember this when I was younger is it has the word here in it. So we know the word here is used to describe location, and that can be seen in the four letters after the T. So here and there are both used to describe location. So that's quite a good way of learning how to remember which there to use when you're talking about location. And as I said, the location um, is about location. So the example here is there is my book. So you could see that that is about the location of where the book is. So there spelt um, T-H-E-R-E is about location. The second one here is a bit like what we were just talking about with the first version of your. Again, it's a contraction of they are. So the contraction is they are. And again, we've removed the letter A and put them together to make there. So an example of this would be 
they're going to the cinema. So they are going to the cinema, they're going to the cinema when it shortens. And the last one again, so that is a bit like your, again, it's possessive. And it's the possessive form of they. So it's used to describe um, the possessive form of they. Um, so it has to do with what belongs to it or relates to it or is made or done by certain people. So the example here, it is their friend. So it is the friend of them, it is their friend. So again, just to quickly recap, they're the first one, T-H-R-E, um, T-H-E-R-A, sorry, is about location. We have the second one, which is a contraction of they are, and the last one is the possessive of they. Moving on, we then have then and than. So these two, unlike the other ones we discussed, do sound different in terms of pronunciation. And the way to keep this pair straight and separate is to focus on the basic difference. Then, the first one, is used when you're talking about something relating to time. So always bear in mind that then refers to time. And, and in difference to that, than is used when you're talking about comparisons. So then, as I said, relates to time. So I will see you then. That's clearly about when you will meet someone. And than is used for comparisons. So he is smarter than her. So you can see there that that is a comparison. The next example we have is effect and effect. Or if you're really pronouncing those first letters, it's affect or effect. Um, but they use quite interchangeably in spoken English. But when you're writing it again, they are very different words. Affect is the verb form. Um, so it's used when you're describing that something is affecting you or affecting them. So it's doing something. So the example here is try not to let the colour affect your decision. And there you can see it is very clearly in the verb form and it is doing something to um, what we say here is the decision. Whereas effect in contrast to this is a noun. So it's a thing. So the music had a big effect on me. As you can see, the, um, it is doing, it is the thing that is happening to you. So the effect is on you. So it's very clearly a noun in this context. The next um, commonly confused words are two, two and two. So um, you probably will be able to um, distinguish um, the middle one from the other two because that's just the number. Um, but the first one, which is just T and one O, is a preposition indicating direction. So when you say I'm going to the shops, I'm giving this to her, I would like to something. As you can see, this is um, usually indicating direction and it is um, commonly used in the English language. It's probably the more common one um, of the three here. As I said, the second one is just the number, written, the written form of the number. Um, and then the last one we have here is T-O-O, -O, which is actually an adverb, um, meaning in addition or also. So you like that photo too. Um, I like cats too. Um, as you can see, it is basically just means in addition or also. Um, so it's not used as frequently as the other two. Okay, and I think this might be the last one, but um, it's and it's is also very commonly confused. So the only difference here again is that apostrophe. So it's similar to the first sort of ones we looked at. And it's probably, yeah, as I said, one of the most two most commonly confused words. So again, they're pronounced the same and there is a very small difference in how they're written. So it is easy to mistake them. So the first one here is it's with no apostrophe. So it's is just a possessive word in the same way my or your is. So here the example is, I walked the dog and held its lead. So as you can see, it's the possessive, the its is referring to the dog, 
and it's possessive of the lead, which is the um, word that goes with it. Whereas it's with the apostrophe in it is again in the same way you, your and um, there with the apostrophes in for they are and um, you are is also a contra contraction. And it's the same type of contraction as where's, there's and words like that. So it um, stands for it is. So the example here is it is over there. So it's over there. So it's just a short and formed again. And similarly to the ones we discussed before, it's just removing a vowel. So the here, the letter I is removed and the words are put together. Now, these are some of those commonly confused words. Obviously, there is a lot more um, similar words in the English um, vocabulary, but I think these are probably the most common ones. What we're going to do now is I'm going to give you one minute and I want you to spot all of the mistakes in this text. So I want you to have a look through and you've got until the timer reaches the end to find as many as you can. Okay, so you've now had a minute to spot as many mistakes as possible. So I'm now highlighting all of the mistakes that you should have spotted. So I walked to the shop to meet you and your friend. That's fine, because that's the correct use of your, because it's possessive. Then, that is incorrect. It should be then, spelt T-H-E-N, because it's describing time. So you would change that to T-H-E-N, the spelling. Then we decide to go to the cinema. The two here should be just T-O. You don't need T-O-O -O as there is no comparison here. At the cinema, they're serving popcorn. Here we should have they are, so you need the contracted form of they are, which is spelt T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E. But I decide it's too expensive. Here is the place where you would use um, T double O. We watch the film. It has lots of special effects. Here, it should be the noun version of effects. So instead of beginning with A, it should start with E. After the film, we go back to your house to see your family. Then I go home. Again, the here, um, there's the incorrect spelling of your. It is not we're going back to you, our house. It is going back to your house. So we should have the possessive one, which is spelt Y-O-U-R. We're now going to do another one. This one is a bit more detailed. So you're going to have 45 seconds to spot all of the mistakes in this one.
Okay, so you've now had 45 seconds to have a read through. And these are the mistakes you should have spotted. As you can see, probably already, there are a couple of things that we've not spoken about today, um, which are spelt or have the wrong word. Um, and so well done if you spotted these. So we start with yesterday I bought a dog. Here the G and the H are the wrong way round and bought is spelt incorrectly here. It's a Dalmatian and it has lots of spots. All of that's fine. I took it for a walk to the park because the weather was very nice. Here, this is the incorrect um, type of weather. This means whether or not um, it's used um, in a different sense to the noun weather, which <clears throat> is spelt W-E-A-T-H-E-R. So this is the wrong form of weather. I threw the ball for my dog and he chased after it. He was much quicker than me. Here, this should be than, not then, because it is comparing the speed of the person who's telling the story and the dog. The running around made me too hot. So this needs to be T double O. So I decided to sit down on a bench. I watched the other people in the park going about their lives. Here, it should be the possessive form of there, so it should be T-H-E-I-R. It has been a long time since I has been to this park. So here, this is the wrong tense. Has here should be had, H-A-D. And then we'll carry on. I used, I used to come here a lot when I was younger. I look at my watch and realise it's time to go. Here, realise has the letter Z in it. While this is correct in American English, um, if you're trying to, um, trying to write in British English, this should be the letter S rather than Z. And this is the case for most words. They have the letter S rather than Z. And the final sentence, I called to my dog to leave the park. Here, as with the previous times, um, the previous example, this should just be two with one O rather than two. Now, I hope this has proved useful in giving you a brief insight into how you should spot mistakes. Often it is these commonly mistook words that are um, errors in pieces of writing. So make sure you're being extra careful at making sure you don't want to make one of these particular mistakes. It's always key just to read through your um, work after you've written it. And I personally like to go away and come back with a fresh pair of eyes because I think it's easier to spot your mistakes then. But make sure you aren't making these ones in particular. And I hope this has been helpful at giving you a brief insight into spotting mistakes in your written work. Have a good rest of your day. Goodbye.